Welcome to another episode of the Peak Potential Success Show. My name is Fong Chua. I'm an entrepreneur, business strategist, real estate investor, speaker, also best-selling author. And every single day, I help others unlock potentials and guide them to succeed. Today on the show, we have another fascinating guest on the show. We interview celebrities, entrepreneurs, business CEOs, artists, athletes to find out their path to success, how they overcome challenges and adversity, and of course, their keys to success. And today's guest is definitely somebody who could shine some light into that because he has a really, really successful, illustrious career uh, in what he does, entrepreneurship, working in over, what, 18 different industries, multiple roles, managing teams of 50 plus worldwide, and helping lots of people succeed. He's taken that into the entrepreneurship and then into real estate investing, where he's touched on buy, fix, and flips, uh, resale, rentals, uh, rentals, what mobile homes and and uh, storage units and all that great stuff, and also helping other people succeed in real estate investing as well. Now, definitely a guy who really lives by the golden rule, which is treat others like he likes to be treated. So please welcome entrepreneur, real estate investor, Mr. Andrew Andrada. Hey, great to be here today. Thanks for your thanks for inviting me. Hey, thanks for being here. It's always nice to chat with people who's uh, done a lot of different things in their life and then also do, does real estate and re- investing and whatnot. So tell us your your journey because you've done so many different things from one industry to another industry. How did that path kind of lead you to where you are today? Well, I mean, it really all it started, which gave me the comfort level is my dad being in the military. So that means we moved around so many times, three different country, uh, about eight different cities, all before I was the age of 15. So with that, I got to see different cl- cultures. I got to see different people, different environments, the way people do things and what have you. So that gave me a little bit more comfort than uh, probably the average person to change. So with that change, uh, if you don't change, you don't succeed. So being able to adapt to situations and as they come up to where I can evolve and be a better person than I was yesterday. What would you say is the main focus of how you can succeed and not worry about change that much? Because in order for you to adapt, that's not something that everybody's comfortable doing. And I'm sure like, because you've done it so much, you got more and more comfortable, it's easier for you to do. But what's that mindset of accepting, adapting to change? Well, it's, well, first of all, I did it without consciously knowing it. I was forced to, <laughs> to, to change, right? I mean, I'm at the will of where my dad gets stationed and what have you, all the different places we've lived and and, and whatnot. But really, um, looking back at it, just understand one basic, first of all, understand one thing. You're not going to die. <laughs> You're not going to die. It's not going to kill you. OK, so once you realize that and help put it into perspective, it, it's not just that big, scary beast. OK, you also look around, too. There are other people that have gone through the same situation you may be going through or about to go through. So if they came out from the other end, take comfort or solace in the fact that, if you know, if you want to immortalize them, look at them as a hero or what have you, you can. If they did it, that means it can be done. Okay, I'll give you an example. Uh, the 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 uh, human mind is a very very powerful thing. Uh, forgive me on the dates, but once upon a time, uh, to run a mile, there is this four minute barrier that nobody could break. So, the world record, everybody was running a mile above four minutes. Once that one person broke the four minute mile. Everybody was doing it. So it's a mindset knowing you can do it, believing in yourself, you know. And also the other thing, too, is to help with is uh, surround yourself with people that believe in you, because those who don't, there will always be naysayers, especially when you want to succeed, when you want to be a better person. Believe, uh, Listen to the ones that believe in you. Mm-hmm. Now- believe in yourself. When, when you were young, have you ever said the thing where, well, all my friends are here. We can't move again. I just I just planted roots. Has that affected how you built relationships later on in your career? Yes. Well, so for the first part of that, yeah, I just got here. I just started making friends. Usually it took me about a year where I start to settle in and start making friends the next school year. And then we move. So all those friends go away and I have to start over. I'm, can I just, can I just, can I just, but you know, uh, 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 that, that I had no choice. We really had no choice in it and we had to do. And that forced me to be a little bit more independent, right? Be, 
uh, uh, and also be a lot more outgoing and out to go out there and make friends. It forced me into those situations. Either that or I was going to eat lunch by myself in the cafeteria, right? Uh, go out and do, won't be able to go out. You see uh, everybody else that grew up with uh, childhood friends, right? They have their own little cliques. Mm -hmm. Well, they'd be able to infiltrate in a good way, right? Become <laughs> friends with, you know, you had to develop those skills to be able to do to uh, understand situational awareness, JT Fox phrase, um, be aware of and sensitive to that uh, uh, that particular group, if you will, what they like, what they don't like, be aware of where you are and what culture, right? The East Coast is way different from where I'm at right now in Texas, different mentality and what have you, different approach. So uh, you have to be able to be adaptable and be okay with mm. and know that, there's not one right thing. Now, would you recommend that type of lifestyle, uh, moving, changing, all that kind of stuff, to develop that kind of comfort when it comes to, when it comes to adapting, adapting to different things? I, 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 for a kid growing up, maybe not so much because it's a little traumatic. <laughs> maybe something in a little uh, along the lines of changing schools, mm -hmm. right? Uh, if you move from one city, uh, excuse me, from one neighborhood to another, you'll change school districts or whatever, or introduce new things, right? Uh, like as a child, just have them keep an open mind and not, it's not always this way. There's only one way to do, but experiment with different things with the comfort, right? You have to feel comfortable that a safety net, if you will, that again, you're not going to, the world is not going to come to an end if you try this. So try it. Keep an open mind. If you like it, great. If you don't, that's fine too. And not pound on the person if they don't like it, right? And that's that's one example. You, you, you They have to feel comfortable in doing it because you don't need to, you know, it's the whole lead with the carrot or beat him with the stick, right? <laughs> I grew up with Nothing to my family, but it's just my the generation beating with a stick. Uh, there's a lot to be said with a carrot and ah. encouraged. <laughs> now, that lifestyle of changing all the time has carried over to your career, changing different industries, working with different teams, but being very successful in all of those. What would you say are some of the most interesting industries that you tapped into? And how did that carry you over into entrepreneurship? Well, some of the interesting industries that I've been in is like one was uh, one one gig that I had. I worked IT contracts for 30 plus years. One of the contracts that I worked on was a, uh, I'd be very careful about saying this, was a paper company. And as a result, um, I mysteriously got sick. I mean, sick. And it's more than just catching a flu kind of sick. So I couldn't pursue working at that plant because it, it uh, wasn't conducive. Wow. So that was an interesting. Um, so again, in that, just like moving around, it, there was a lot of change involved because I worked contract to contract, right? It was finite based. And I had to be adaptable, had to understand, had to know. So a couple of things that people have taught me during the years is that uh, my professor told me one time when uh, we would learn all these different courses we had, there's all these different computer systems we had to learn. All of us kept going through there and reading the manual from page to page. And if you ever saw a computer manual, it's thick. The guy looked at me and says, look, first of all, you're, you're going to do nothing then because you have so many computer systems that you have to learn during the course of your career or college career. He says, learn the basics. If you need to know something, look it up. So that rolled into, along with another person that told me he was a head of a chemical plant. And he told me, he says, look, you know the stuff. You've been taught the stuff. You don't have to sit and memorize it in front of your, uh, front, uh, front mem uh, front of your, uh, uh, right in front of you, it's okay to know where to find it. You know, just know where to find it. So combining the two is having enough skills to, number one, to be able to function within that industry and or environment. But if you don't know, know where to go, be it know who to go talk to, know what book you need to go read, know what resource you need to pull in, just know when. 
just know when to and be able to pull in the right people and be able to orchestrate that. And with that, okay, put a little twist to that with my own philosophy is you got to make it to where they can succeed. Okay. It's not about me achieving my goal. Like let's say as a project manager, right? I have this uh, budget and I have to finish this time. Okay. It's not about me doing that and beating everybody else out in the process, keeping people up at 23 hour work shifts uh, for weeks on end and stuff like that, because I've worked in that environment, but make it to where they succeed too. Right. I don't care about the limelight. I just care that the team succeeds and we meet our goal as a team. Awesome. Now you've taken that mentality into now real estate and you've been very, very successful in real estate as well. And I, I like how that, that saying where, okay, you don't have to know everything. You just need to know where to find that information where lots of people are so focused on no, trying to know everything that they never get started. So for you, why, why did you pick real estate as to something that you want to pursue on after you've been so su successful as an entrepreneur and doing all the other stuff? Well, when I looked at different successful business people, entrepreneurs, serial entrepreneurs, I've noticed one common thing that every one of them has in their portfolio, real estate. So I figured real estate would be a good launch area from in which to diverse into. And in my portfolio will always consist of real estate. With that, I figured as I do deals, as I... Uh, meet other people, other opportunities will present itself. I just have to be. And another thing too is you have to be open to. Now I will tell this and I'll speak to all the left brainers out there. I am so left brain. It's not even funny. I have been told politely a few times that I need to lighten that up by a few mentors. So, <laughs> so uh, what don't expect to see success look a certain way. Be open to success, okay? It may come at you a different way that you didn't see or think of or expect or predicted, but it'll come to you. It is always there. So let me give you an example, okay? Um, for those of you out there who now own a Prius or before you own a Prius, right? You just notice cars out there. But the minute you buy a Prius, all of a sudden you see Priuses everywhere, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, for the women, okay? Or no, excuse me, the husbands, okay? I can t speak from my perspective. You see people out there, but when the minute your wife gets pregnant, you see all these pregnant people out there. It's the same thing with opportunity. Opportunity is out there. You just have to be open to and recognize it. So mm -hmm. thus, that was a uh, that that was a cornerstone. My start, my a stepping stone, in which to branch off into other things. Mixed in with my experience of what I've had in the past between accounting, financials, all the different industries that I've worked in, coupled that in to help me be able to function, work, and help other people succeed along with me. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned how you've been lightly told that you are a left brainer and how to take it a little bit lighter. How how did you approach that? How did you not be as left brain as you normally are? <laughs> well, it, it's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of, uh, first of all, you got to be open to it, right? Mm -hmm. Again, it's like opportunity, you got to be open to it. Because if I'm like dead set in my ways, which I was for the longest time, still am in certain degrees, I had to be open to listen to. In these particular cases, there's, two couple key people that uh, uh, in my life that helped me along this lines, um, I wanted to be where they're at. Well, what's some of the traits that they have to be open to and listen to? Now, if I'm insistent, again, part of the left brain, and I'm one of those left brains, I call it a left brain sergeant, right? Not only are you going to have fun, this is how you're going to have fun. I'm like, I, I mean, that 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 goes over like a ton of bricks. Yeah, exactly. Yes, I, sir. Sir. Having fun now, sir. <laughs> yeah, and that's the last time I see them. You know, uh, um, it, they, 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 would, uh, they were successful, and I saw how they were successful. They weren't focusing in on the things that I was focusing in on. And I saw enough people to where, okay, how stupid do I have to be not to listen to? Again, it's it, it's in front of me. Am I willing to listen to it and accept it? Okay. I believe, I believe to a large degree that we're all created equal. 
Okay. Some of us have more gifts than this, this, and that. We have 24 hours in our wallet. How do we de how do we decide to spend that? Do we decide on spending on the stupid minutia little detail like I do? Or do we spend it on talking to terrific people like you, right? Getting building relationships, helping other people out, being a servant, server and a servant. I remember when I first heard that, I thought it was the kookiest thing <laughs> until I got it. I'm like, oh, okay, I understand, right? So uh, be open, be hmm. open. Don't be, don't be scared. It's not going to kill you. What What is the most right-minded thing that you've challenged yourself to do? Um, believe it or not, talking to total strangers. <laughs> talk, talk, oh my gosh, it so paralyzes me just to talk to strangers, right? But uh, um, again. It's not going to kill me. <laughs> the worst they're going to say is get away from me. Get away. You <laughs> are blah, insert descriptive word here. Get away. Like, okay. I, I could so relate to that because at the time, picking up the phone and finding mm -hmm. the right lawyer to work with mm -hmm. was the toughest thing I could ever imagine. I mean, what if they don't think I'm good enough? What if they think I'm stupid? Yes. What, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I need to have a whole list of stuff I need to say. And then eventually you realize, wait a minute, I'm supposed to be their client if I pick them. So they should be the person that's asking me to be with them, not the other way around. So it's right. uh, it's that big mindset change that really gets you across that border and go, hey, this is what I want. This is what I'm going to do and, and kind of face that challenge. Right. I, I mean, how how funny is that? We're scared what they're going to think of me or what they're going to say to me. And I'm looking at them to give them money. <laughs> <laughs> like, hmm. no, I totally get you. And that 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 would paralyze me. And I'd still have uh, the stuff like that. When I make a phone call, I'm like interested in, in to see if they're interested in selling their home. Right. You're stupid. You're trying to steal money from me. You're blah, 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 blah. You're uh, how you should be ashamed of yourself. Does your parents know what you do? And so on and so on and so on. Right. And they <laughs> and they're so mean to you over the phone. I mean, like, what what do you do? Right. That's the kind of stuff that paralyzes. The only thing I can say is Jesus loves you. Have a great day. <laughs> I mean, no. I I've literally had a lawyer come after me to make me feel bad that I help people out of foreclosures help people out of, uh, with short sales and stuff like that. He tried to make me feel bad and label me as unethical in, and inhumane. I'm like, um, if I don't do this and help them out, help them out, who's going to help them out? Because it ain't, it isn't the bank, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, yeah. So in, in real estate, uh, take us through that very first deal that that you went into i'm sure oh as a minor uh you had a lot of ifs and whatnots and all that kind of stuff making you mm, should i put in the offer should i not what if it doesn't get accepted take us to that very first deal oh my you. gosh are you kidding me <laughs> um so again this is a little bit of my left brain coming out <laughs> i have been looking at property for a bit i've looked at it through different cities and looked at the markets and stuff like that so Houston was one way back. Um, okay. Took real estate classes and whatever. So I was analysis by paral uh, paralysis by analysis for literally decades. I looked at real estate and I did not pull the trigger. Did not pull the trigger. Houston, Atlanta, um, Chicago, uh, Florida, all these did not put all those markets did not pull the trigger because I was to, uh, uh, paralyzed, if you will, in, in in hindsight. My first foyer into buying real estate was in Indianapolis, Indiana. And that's when I first, I lost you there, Chief. There you go. Um, Indianapolis, Indiana, the first deal that I had there, I looked at, I said, okay, I finally jumped, took the leap. And I said, I got to, I know I'm going to be scared, so on and so on. So I worked with a few people. Number one, a real estate agent who knew the area. Number two, I worked with uh, uh, funding, a broker. I wish to get funding. And so I tried to look at the property and see if it made money. I walked it and and, and I had so many spreadsheets <laughs> on 
all the different, I, I, I literally went, I had costs for nails. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. How much does the nail cost and how many am I going to hammer in for each stud? <laughs> okay. So first thing, <laughs> and only to realize they don't sell nails by each. They sell oh, a no, no. bundle. <laughs> how much is a pound? How many nails are in a pound? <laughs> so I I need to know so I know how many nails I can hammer in. So, you know, and that's the first, that was the first deal, right? I mean, oh, I was at closing and I'm like, how many docs do I have to sign? So I was extremely nervous going in there. Um, I had the full support of my wife. But at the same time, too, I'm putting my name on here. I've got the mortgage of and all this and just all the different stuff I would look at. I would keep visiting the property. I would keep, oh, my gosh, my realtor was so nice. I All the questions that I kept asking him and this, this, this and that. And what if? And I went through all these scenarios. But you know what it came down to it is uh, I, I have to I had to make that leap. Right. Uh, there will always understand that there's always going to be outstanding questions. You're, th there's no way you're going to be able to answer everything. You just have to go out there and things will happen. You just have to go out there. When things come up, you have to go out there and say, there's a solution. Someone's been over this before. Try to find that person. Now with the internet, oh my gosh, it's so much easier. Go out there, find it. There's a solution. Believe believe that there is a no lose scenario and there's a way around this to fix this no matter what pops up and go forward. So my first deal, of course, I was scared. Finally pulled the trigger. Stuff popped up, but I figured my way around that. And then after I do my first, my second, my third, you know, you get more confidence knowing that there's a solution out there. Tomorrow, the sun will rise. Go out there and figure it. You're going to get hit. I understand my expectation going into this. I'm going to get bloody. I'm going to get beaten up. I'm going to get scars, permanent scars, temporary scars. That's fine. I'm going to make it on the other end and accept it and go forward. So, okay. Your very first deal, I'm going to assume, was a success. Correct? Yes. And therefore, yes. you go, okay, let's do it again. Right? You go, yes. ah, it was worth my while. I'll do it again. I've learned stuff. I'm going to adjust. What about that first failure, that first deal that did not go your way? How long did it take you to decide, okay, I'm going to do another one, even if I failed on this one? So, so that's kind of a two-part, if you will. So first of all, there are homes, right? And let's just say uh, these were, uh, the, the, this particular one was a rental. So I'm in the middle of trying to rehab this as I'm doing other deals, right? So what happens is, which compounded it, I'm having trouble with a particular property. I mean, I could so picture the house, and the, the address and everything. Um, and then I had these other deals that I'm trying to work. So this one is a source bane of my existence. I, I, I had so much momentum going forward. I didn't have time to throw a pity party. I had to figure out a solution and I just started who talking to my contractor. How do we fix this? Who do you know we can fix this? How has this been done before? And it's just because, because if I stopped all these other deals that I was working on would fail or I would lose money or what have you. But because of that momentum, it pushed me forward, mm -hmm. right? To where I had to succeed. Okay, so as a result of my work and as a result of the things that I have done, uh, that I was doing, it helped create a draft. Uh, sorry, that's a NASCAR term, but it helped create a draft that helped pull me along. Okay, so that's how I was able to deal with that. Now, again, there was a lot of sleepless nights, but thanks to that, it helped pull, pull me through. Now, I know you were battling your own mind throughout all these deals. At the same time, I'm also sure that there's people around you who's telling you, don't do that. It's not gonna work. This is the worst thing in the world. As you're trying to fight your own battles, you have to fight the outside battles. How did you deal with those outside battles, especially if those outside battles are people who love you? Okay, so first my family, I'm the black sheep. That's, <laughs> I, the, the phrase is, Oh, that's just Andrew. 
<laughs> okay. So it, you, you just have to believe in what you're doing. Okay. And find people that are of the same mindset. Okay. Because it, it, it's hard enough when you do it by yourself and you're there by yourself and you have nobody around you. It's as if you're an island. So that, that helps, right? Don't, don't, don't forsake, but just, you know, that number one was my family. I had friends, people, coworkers. Again, I was doing back then in Indianapolis, I was doing it along with my IT gig. And, uh, yeah, people around me found out. People were literally laughing at me. <laughs> they were laughing at me. They're, eh, eh, how do you handle that? Yes, because that's what I strive for in life is to be ridiculed, right? So that doesn't give any warm fuzzies. But the, you know, ask how to deal with it is because no, 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 no. What your end goal is? Mm -hmm. What is your end goal? Do they have any merits in what they say? Do I want to be just like them? Or do I admire them and I want them to be my mentor? Right. If it's the first part, love them as a friend, but you know, I'm not seeking advice from you specifically. <laughs> right. So, so, so um, one time when I was talking to a potential uh, uh, um, buyer, uh, excuse me, seller, you know, uh, in the course of the conversation, you know, I want to be this, I want to be that, I want to be so on and so on. Right. I want to be successful in whatever. And they were admiring their neighbors and what have you. And then I asked them if they wanted to be like their neighbor. They go. No, because they're this, this, this and this, whatever that was. Right. I don't want to get into the negatives of all that. Then I asked, then why are you living beside them? <laughs> OK, it's the same thing. OK, listen to those where you want to be. Don't with the people that you don't agree with where they're at. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, fast forward to today, you work with uh, partners, money partners, and other people to help them become successful in real estate investing. What What are you looking for? What do you, how do you help others uh, succeed? Okay. First of all, it's a mindset. I got to be right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Am I a, a accounting term fiduciary responsibility, right? But take it a little bit further than that, right? Do I have honor, integrity? Do I do what I say? If things go wrong, will I fix it? Be honest, right? I have to be right. And with that, as I want to, when someone invests in a project that I have, okay, that means a lot. Because I know if I were to, what that means to me as the investor, but mm -hmm. them investing in one of my projects, number one, I have to be right with, right? I treat, I treat them and their money with the utmost respect, more so than I would mine. Right. Okay. Number two, they have to be, okay, the golden rule. Treat others as you wish others to treat you, right? But you to be treated. They have to have the, somewhat of the same philosophy. Okay. They can't be this really belligerent, ugly, what have you person, because that our, our personalities wouldn't match, right? right? Maybe they're, we have to get along. I have to like them. They have to like me. I have to, they have to be able to trust me. Okay. If they don't feel it, that's fine. Right. That is, that is totally fine. We have to get along on a, if you will, on a semi-personal level. Right. Okay. Um, th th there has to be that. They have to have respect in because if they don't, they're going to be asking me all the time what's going on. They're going to feel like they've been cheated. And that's not what I want, even though I'm not. I, I want them to be able to sleep at night. I'm the one who's doing the heavy lifting. So I look for those that I get along with. I mean, this is a lot like dating. OK, it's a lot like dating. Mm -hmm. OK, do you get along with? Can you respect the other person? Can you trust the other person? And it has to be a two-way street. It can't be a one-way street. Now, you mentioned a few times throughout this interview about mentors and people who, who guided you along. Uh, you're a person who spends a lot of time with different people, different successful people, and people who you want to be successful just as they are. Now, what are some of the, like, maybe the biggest comment or biggest advice that somebody has given you that really changed your your path 180 degrees?
Wow. Um, there's two people that are key in my life. You know, you have these people in the course of your life that just really turned it around for you. Right. Um, really? It's okay. <laughs> Believe it or not, something as simple as it's okay. Wound so tight. I was wound up so tight. It's okay. That's one of the biggest things. And again, that comes of that is I'm not going to die if I do this. And I treat it. And as I look at that, I feel so stupid, but I treated those situations as if I was going to die. I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not, I'll be okay. <laughs> so that's, you know, really that's, that's one of the biggest things is I'll be okay. <laughs> this is probably a loaded question, but um, yeah. how, do you, how do you relax? Don't take life that seriously. There's time to take it seriously. Mm -hmm. This philosophy, if you're not laughing, you're crying. <laughs> <laughs> so laugh, right? So, there are funny things in this world. Just again, if you're not laughing, you're crying. So yeah. So my my I guess my the question I should be asking is how do you how do you unwind? Because you said before, sometimes you're so you're you're so tight. You you are so focused on certain things. You're so left minded. So how do you unwind? How do you relax? How do you feel comfortable and stuff like that? Okay, there's two things that I do. OK, uh, you got to find that thing that does it for you. Right. What does it for me may not do it for somebody else, but find that thing. So there's two things that uh, help me unwind. One is driving. OK, driving with uh, the radio off. It forces me in a confined space to not to be distracted and figure out stuff and just figure it. Issues or what have you and think it through. OK. That's number one. Number two, again, my happy thing is to take things apart and put it together. So one of my hobbies is uh, restoring cars oh, oh. or rebuilding cars, right? So there have been, I've had a couple projects where I've done that. And then, uh, 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 yeah, like one of my ultimate goals, but fortunately you don't have the time for it, is to find a 77 or 78 Trans Am T-top smoking the bandit and restore it. <laughs> That sounds totally awesome. Um, oh, yeah. For for you, let's put you on the world stage because I I know you do speaking now as well, and you get a few moments to share with everybody a a message, some insights, or something that you want everybody to remember you for. What would that be? Find the people that believe in you. Listen to those people that believe in you. Listen to those people that know what they're talking about, and it will be okay. Okay. <laughs> you're not going to die. You're not, I mean, really, I'm sorry. I keep coming back to that, but that's one of the biggest things. You're not going to die. Mm -hmm. It's not catastrophic. Uh, again, being a left brainer, everything's catastrophic. Everything is death con one, everything. There's yeah. no gray. There is no gray, but it'll be okay. It'll be okay. There's always a way mm -hmm. and believe in yourself. You can and if you don't believe in yourself, find somebody that does work off of that for a while until where you can, you can yourself, mm -hmm. right? You can, you can stand on your own two feet and be able to function by yourself and believe in yourself and have enough confidence to be able to do what you needed to do. But if you don't find somebody who you're willing to shadow for a while, that'll help you along. There are people that will, there are people that are more than happy to life is not built to where you live in a vacuum. What that means specifically is that you're not put on the face of this earth to be by yourself. Mm -hmm. You're not on the face of this earth to, to, be, to be alone. Okay. There are times you are, but you're not. Okay. We were built and put on this earth to interact with other people. It doesn't have to be a thousand people. It doesn't have to be 10,000 people. It could be just one person. Okay. Whomever that is, mm -hmm. be with, find those set of people, surround yourself with, and, and go forth. Awesome. Now, listening to you speak and the energy that you project, like it's hard to say that you're a left-minded person because lots of people I know who are left-minded do not have the type of energy that you're showing right now. So I guess my, my follow-up question to that is, where does this energy come from? How do you harness that energy and how do you project it? Um, it, it it's not something I do consciously, right? It's just that I'm happy with the prospect of. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm happy that I live in a place to where I can define how successful or not that I can be. Right. The possibility are, 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 
The possibility is whatever I place on myself. Okay. Believing in such, believing in things, going towards things that you want to do, right? I'm doing this for uh, the things that I do are for various reasons, right? Um, a lifestyle in which I want to live, right? And when I mean lifestyle, it it's not that I'm going to be on a yacht off the coast of uh, Monaco, that, 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 no, 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 not that kind of lifestyle. I'm talking a lifestyle where that is comfortable, where I can go out and I can uh, see the water. I can, you know, just be relaxed and what have you, uh, where I don't have to wear my watch. I don't have to have my phone, <laughs> you know, that kind of, that kind of lifestyle and be happy with, and no, when you take away hope, when you take away hope, you steal a person's heart. You you take away everything from them. When oh. you take away hope, know that there's hope. Know what you want. And the only one that's telling you, no, you can't have it. Now, of course, be realistic, right? If you want to be the president <laughs> of the United States, there's only an infinite amount of people that can be that. But be more realistic. But the only person that tells you that you can't do what you want, need to do, want to do, or be successful or have what you want is you, not you. But you and them have figured it, right? So believe in that. Believe in that, right? Have people around you that believe that. Has a best friend, okay, that supports you with. You just have a best friend. Mm -hmm. All he would do is knock me down. I'd be the butt of his jokes. <laughs> I'm like, dude, seriously? Stop, okay? That, that doesn't help me. So believe. Believe and know that and have hope. Hey, awesome words to live by. I think uh, we can stop our formal questionings here because that's a great end point. Uh, but before I let you go, I got five quick rapid fire questions. Give me the first thing that comes to mind. You're, <laughs> you're stranded, okay. on a, right stranded on a deserted island. One food to eat for the rest of your life, no consequence. One food? One food. McDonald's French fries, Yahoo! <laughs> <laughs> Somebody who knows how to play that game goes completely unhealthy. <laughs> um, oh, 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 no, no, you said it. No consequences. <laughs> I know. That's why I said you know how to play the game. <laughs> I got people saying apples. I'm like, ah. Oh. <laughs> um, so close. Hollywood calls and goes, hey, Andrew, we love your story. It's so inspirational. Who would you cast to play you? Okay. You gotta be cautious. I know exactly who it is, <laughs> but I gotta be cautious about this because I don't want to be insensitive to the situation. But I would love for it to have been Bruce Willis. Oh wow, he shows right. up at your door and says, "Hey, buddy, I got casted to play you. Uh, let's hang out. Let's have some fun." And you go, "Hey, Bruce, buddy, no worries. I got the night planned out. It's gonna be amazing. What does that night look like to you?" Are you kidding me? That guy knows how to have so much fun. Okay, <laughs> first. We'd go find a place where he can play in the band because he's huge in singing and instruments that he played, right? Hang out at a bar. Really, just hang out at the bar and just meet and talk to all these people because that guy really, really is uh, 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 makes friends really, really easy. So I would love to be in an atmosphere like that where we're talking to all these people and just having fun. Awesome. Um, he goes, I'm hungry. And you say, no worries, Bruce. Give me a few moments. I'm going to fix you something awesome. What's that special dish that you can serve? That I can fix or I can get him? <laughs> oh, you could claim that you got it. You, you made it. <laughs> Texas barbecue. Good choice. And my last question. Uh, give me a number from one to four. Three. One, two, three. So if you had to relate success to a tricycle, how is success like a tricycle? Okay. You have, if you had to choose, uh, and, I'll, and I'll cut this down to be appreciative of the time. If you had to choose between a world champ, uh, you're in a bike race, okay? If you had to choose from a four-time Tour de France winner or me, who would you choose? The natural answer, somebody would say, of course, is the four-time 
But wait, what if I was, his bike was that of a 10 speed or whatever they use in the Tour de France and I had a tricycle, who would you pick? Again, they would pick him. Then I would tell them, then I would ask them, but what if I had a world-class team of, I think they're called spotters, the ones that go behind you, trade out your bikes, mm -hmm. uh, mechanics, uh, the best tricycle, so on and so on. And he had a bunch of people that he found from college and whatever, basically saying that I have a world-class team and he has somebody that he found from Craigslist, even though he's a Tour de France winner or what have you, who would you back? Who would you invest in? Who would you bet in? The team. So then when you have that, and my claim to that would be that I'm not the slickest person in the world, by no means. I have trouble sometimes, even though English is my first language, I struggle with that. Okay. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not that guy. I'm not that front guy. What I am is that guy who can get out there and fix it and make it work. I'm that guy that will die sleepless nights to make sure it works in whatever form that may be. Okay. And when there's somebody that's backing me and I have, uh, uh, there's a lot more at stake in that there's another person outside of me, I would try, I would move heaven and earth to make that happen. That includes a team. It's not just me. That includes a team. That includes a world-class team. And to be able to identify what that team is. I'll say with this last word, one of these things, when I was a kid, I used to watch Star Trek. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. I still watch Star Trek. Oh, one I of the things, <laughs> one of the things that I learned out of there was Captain James T. Kirk, and he says, I don't believe in a no-lose no scenario. That has haunted me. And has been woven into my DNA ever since, okay? Ever since I was a child. I don't believe in a no-lose scenario, okay? There's always got to be a way. I have now tempered that with age and also understand that, you know, you have to factor in at what cost, right? So you now have to, with maturity, I had to balance, right? There is a no-lose scenario. There's always a way, but is it worth the price? OK, and you have to be able to balance that, especially with, when you're with investments. So tricycle. <laughs> Ooh, tricycle. Awesome. Nice, nicely done. So that's how success is like a tricycle. That's going to be a very souped up tricycle, too, I'm for sure. <laughs> it will be. <laughs> um, any final words from you and how do people get in touch with you? OK, well, first of all, it has been a great pleasure having uh, uh, our conversation today. Uh, thank you very much for thinking a lot of me to be on your terrific podcast. OK, from from the day that I met you. Naturally gravitate to you and, and I can totally see why you're so famous. OK, <laughs> why you're very well known. OK, so thank you very much. It's been an honor to be here. Um, how people can get a hold of me, and uh, I don't know if you're going to have a link or what have you, is they can either email me at, my name is Andrew Andrada, so A Andrada, my first initial, last name, at txepp.com. That is Tango Echo, excuse me, Tango X-Ray Echo Papa Papa.com. Okay. They can also see me online at my page at meetandrewandrada.com. And of course, I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, and X. Nicely done. So make sure everybody out there get connected with Andrew. Uh, obviously, a guy who who knows what he's talking about, who's high energy. You're never going to have a dull moment. At the same time, you're going to be successful in real estate as well. So uh, once again, thank you very much, Andrew. Uh, for everybody else, until next time, he's Andrew. My name is Paul Chuan. Until next time, today is the day to lock your P potential. We'll see you later.